fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, had gone by stage to visit friends in a town some distance away and was returning by stagecoach to join the Lone Ranger and Tonto in their camp near Sandrock. Get up, Dan! Get up! As the stage moved along the trail a few miles from Sandrock, Dan talked to a man who was the only other occupant of the coach. You said a while ago, Mr. Bentley, that you came through from St. Louis. Is this your first trip west? Oh, no, indeed, son. I own the general store in Pecos. Went to St. Louis on a visit. I'm mighty glad to be getting back home. Well, we've been taking care of the store in Pecos for you while you were away. I got a brother in business with me. He's been running things at the store. I've got a present for him there in my carpet bag. The fanciest belt buckle I ever see. And it's all made by hand. I'll show it to you, Daniel. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh yes, here it is. After this paper. There it is. What do you think of it? Golly, that's a beauty. Yes, it is. And there's no other like it either. That horse's head you see on the buckle is a real gold pounded right into the silver. Let my brother be glad to get that. Great day outlaws are coming. We're going to be held up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Trouble you get the strong box from the boot. All right, All right you sir. come with me to the coach. Sure, sir. Give sure. an eye on that driver, you fellas. Yeah. Here they come. All right, sir. All right. <laughs> Just one man and a kid. Get out, both of you, and make it fast. Better do as he says, Dan. I don't have anything worth taking. Give me your wallet, mister. I guess I have to. Uh, it is. Hey, Turk. What's that in the boy's hand? Uh, let me see that, kid. Yes, sir. Oh, it really isn't anything. It's just a belt buckle. A gift that Mr. Ben... Give me it, I said. Oh, not worth taking, huh? Looks like it's made of pure gold and silver to me. I'll take it along for luck. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Bentley. Uh, it doesn't matter, Daniel. If they take it from you or me, they'd take it anyway. Stop the gab and get back into the coach. Well, come on, Daniel. All right. Steady, fellow. You got the strong box? Yeah, we got it, sir. Is it? We didn't get much from the coach. Well, let's get out of here. Get that stage moving, driver. Hurry up. Sure, sure. Get out there. Get up. Get up. Get up.
A short time later, the stage arrived in Sandrock. Dan and Mr. Bentley made a report to the sheriff about the robbery. Then Mr. Bentley continued his long journey to Pecos. Meanwhile, Dan got his horse, Victor, at the livery stable and rode to the camp in the hills where the Lone Ranger and Toto were waiting. Dan told them about the stage robbery. It's too bad Mr. Bentley lost the buckle he was taking to his brother. Yes, it is, Dan. Oh, did you get a good look at the outlaws? No, sir. That is, they wore bandanas on the lower part of their faces. I see. One of them was named Turk. He seemed to be the leader. Maybe him Turk Banner came us out Me see handbills about him and gang. Yes, it probably was Turk Banner. He and his gang have caused a great deal of trouble in this territory. You tell Sheriff about hold up, Dan? Oh, yes, Tano. Mr. Bentley and I told the Sheriff everything we could about it. They were sending out a posse when I left town. Tano was getting ready to go to town when you arrived here in camp, Dan. I think I'll ride along to the edge of town with him in case there's any news of the outlaws. You stay here until we come back. Yes, sir. Silver and Scout are already saddled. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Easy, big fellow. Easy, 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 fellow. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. After the Lone Ranger and Tonto had left the camp, Dan decided to rest a bit. But the afternoon was hot and he soon gave up the idea. Finally, he mounted Victor and rode into the hills to pass the time. After riding several miles, he came to a small farmhouse. Dan decided to stop and get a drink of water from the well. Oh, oh Victor, oh boy, easy for us, steady boy. What do you want, kid? What you doing here? Oh, hello. I stopped to see if I can get a drink of water from your well. You're sort of young to be riding around this country alone. What you doing so far from town? Just riding, that's all. Hmm. What's your name? Dan Reed, ma'am. All right, Dan. There's the well over there. You'll find a bucket of fresh water on the ledge, and there's a dipper hanging on the post. Come on. If you want to go back into the house, ma'am, I I can get a drink and then leave. I'll stick with you till you do leave. Here's the well. Grab that dipper there and get your drink, son. Thanks. Mm. That's good water. Cold, too. You better get on your horse now and ride on out of here got my brother visiting with some friends, and he don't like folks snooping around. Oh, I didn't come here to snoop. I, I really wanted a drink, that's all. Man, you got it, so now you can get going. <laughs> Nice-looking horse you got there. Thanks, I think so. Here comes my brother now. He won't like your coming here. Hey, Peg, what's that button doing here? Who is he? Name's Dan Reed. Just stopped here for a drink of water. You know him? Never saw him before now, Mac. He looks familiar to me somehow. I don't know just where I could have seen him, but... What are you staring at, kid? I... I was looking at that belt buckle. It's awfully nice. Well, I'd better leave now, ma'am. Thanks for the water. Hey, wait a minute. What? What's the matter, sir? Let the boy go, Mac, so we can get... Just hold your to... horses, Peg. I'm beginning to remember now. Remember what? Well, I saw this boy before. So you recognize this belt buckle, huh, kid? No, uh, why, I just thought it was different, that's all. Don't try to bluff out of it. What's this all about, Mac? Just this, Peg. You see, this is the same boy who had this buckle this morning. Turk took it away from him. So you were one of the outlaws who held up the stage. See, Peg, the boy's smarter than you gave him credit for. Somehow he managed to trail us here. Now that he's here, he can stay a while and meet Turk. No, I have to get back. My friends will be... Shut up! Put his horse in the barn, Peg. I'll take this little snooper inside and see what Turk wants to do with him. All right, Button, get moving and make it quick. Toto waited in town that afternoon until the posse returned with the report that they had not been able to find the outlaws. Then the Indian joined the Lone Ranger on the edge of town, and they started back to the camp. As they rode the trail toward camp, a sudden storm came up. This storm will wash out any trail the outlaws may have left, Tonto. That's right. Good thing we built lean to at camp, and be able to keep plenty dry. Yes, we'll have a change of dry clothing waiting for us. Let's hurry, Tonto. I want to get to camp in time to fix supper. Dan must be hungry after his trip and after waiting so long for us. Come on, Silver! Come on, Silver! By 
the time the Lone Ranger and Toto arrived at the camp, the storm had passed. Oh, 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 easy, oh, easy, 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 fella. Me not see Victor. No, I'm beginning to wonder. Here's a lean to. Maybe Dan is. Dan isn't here. Oh, no. Him go for a ride, maybe. Yes, maybe so. But he ought to be back by now. He'd be soaking wet, too. It's not easy to hunt for Dan. Storm wash away tracks. Yes, I know. Well, we'll change into dry clothes. Perhaps by that time, Dan will return. And we'll have supper. The Lone Ranger and Toto changed to dry clothing. Then, as dusk began to fall, they prepared supper, hoping that Dan would return in time to eat with them. But when the food was ready, neither of the men seemed inclined to eat. And the Lone Ranger paced back and forth nervously. You worry about Dan, Kimasabi. Yes, Toto, I am worried. Something may have happened to him during that storm. He may be hurt. We know him not right to town. That's right. We would have met him on the trail. If something hasn't happened, I know Dan would be back. He knows we worry if he isn't here by sundown. Oh, him know that. I'm going to ride Silver along the trail in the other direction, away from town. You stay here, Toto, in case he does come back. Ah, me wait. If Dan get back soon, me come tell you. I'd rather be looking for him than waiting like this. You not want food now? No, I'll eat something later. Adios, easy, big fella. Monster! Meantime, at the farm hideout of the outlaw gang. Dan had been tied up and put on a cot in the bedroom just off the living room. The outlaws had eaten their supper. Then Turk, with Mac and his sister Peg, entered the room where Dan lay. Turk placed a lighted lamp on the table. Then he approached the cot. Well, you dirty little snooper. Guess you must be getting hungry, huh? Yes, I am. <laughs> you hear that, Mac? The boy's hungry. Yeah. Guess he could smell supper cooking. Mighty nice supper we had, too. Sure was. The kid's going to be begging for food before we're through with him. That is, unless he tells us who knows he came here and who sent him asking for water. I told you nobody sent me. I was out riding and wanted water, that's all. If he's really telling the truth, Turk, we got nothing to worry about. As long as he don't get away. I think we ought to give him a little food anyhow, Turk. He's just a boy, you know. Yeah, but a doggone smart one. We're leaving here tomorrow. We'll have to get rid of him before then. Just leave him here. I'll keep him tied up a few days, then let him go. Folks won't believe any story he tells about finding outlaws here. It'd be his word against mine. Are you loco, Peg? His folks would have missed him. And the fact that you kept him here would cause suspicion. The sheriff would question you till he found out something. Well, what are you planning to do with him, then? I'm leaving that up to Turk. It's his gang. What do you got on your mind, Turk? If you shoot the boy, they might tie it onto the gang somehow. And we'll be hunted for murder. Nah. Oh, nah. He won't be alive when they find him, Mac. But they won't think it was murder either. They'll believe it was an accident. But there's one thing that you can be sure of. Before we leave this territory, that nosy kid's gonna be dead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Turk Banner, leader of the outlaw gang, told Mac, one of the outlaws, and his sister Peg, that Dan Reed would be dead when the gang left the territory. As they stood over the cot on which Dan lay, the woman Peg looked down at the boy a moment. Then she spoke to Turk. Are you fixing to kill him off and make it look accidental, Turk? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. It's easy. We take him and his horse along with us when we leave the farm. When we reach the place where the trail goes along the top of Rocky Canyon, we untie the boy and toss him over. Toss him into the canyon? Sure. And we'll force that horse of his over the edge, too. When they're found about 500 feet below in the rocks, everybody will think the horse slipped and went over while the boy was riding the trail. Now, look here, Turk. That's no way to treat a boy like him. Shut up. I'm running this gang. What I say goes, do you savvy? Yeah, you better keep quiet, Peg, and let Turk do the planning. Come on, let's go back into the other room. For several hours, the Lone Ranger hunted for some sign left by Dan, but was not successful. Finally, he returned to the camp where Toto was waiting. Oh, Silver Hobo, easy setting up. You not find trace of Dan, Victor? No, Toto, I haven't. It's quite dark tonight, so it's almost impossible to see much. I was hoping Dan might have come back while I was gone. No, him not come back. And Victor not come back. I'm inclined to think he's running into trouble that's not accidental. Otherwise, if Dan were hurt somewhere, he'd send Victor back to the camp. And that's right. And what we do now? It's almost morning, Toto. We'll try to rest a bit. Then at dawn, we'll set out again. And we won't give up until we find out what's happened. During the first part of the night, Dan slept fitfully. Dawn was just a short time away when he was awakened by someone shaking his shoulder. Hey, hey, boy, wake up. Uh, What, what? Be quiet. I waited till they were all asleep. Brought you some bread and a glass of milk. Oh, golly, thanks. These cords on my hands and ankles, they hurt. Sorry, kid. I don't dare take a chance letting you loose. I'll have to feed this to you. I wish you hadn't come here. Sure hate to see a nice kid like you end up the way they plan for you. That Turk's a mean one. He'll do what he says he will. I wish I could do something, but I just can't. I, I know you can't let me go, but maybe there is one thing you could do that that wouldn't get you into trouble with them. What's that? Well, it's my horse. Victor means a lot to me. I don't want him pushed over the cliff. I was thinking maybe you could get to the barn and let him go. Say, I got to give you credit, Dan. There you are facing death yourself, and can you think about that horse of yours? If you could do that for me, just let Victor go. They could think he broke loose. Well, all right. I'll sneak out to the barn, turn the horse loose like you want, kid. It's the most I can do for you. Now you better take your bread and milk before someone wakes up and finds me in here. After giving Dan the food, the woman Peg left the house and went to the barn. A few minutes later, she led Victor to the barn door. All right, then. I know who's waiting around. Go on, then. Get up. Get going. As Victor galloped away, Peg ran to the house and hurriedly entered. Hey, Peg. You just rode away from here. Uh, nobody did, Mac. I heard hoofs, so I ran to the door just in time to see that boy's horse leaving. He must have broke loose. You sure no one was on him? Positive. With dawn breaking, it's easy to see. What are you doing up so early? I thought Turk might want to make an early start. Got up to get breakfast ready just in case. Good idea. That Turk's going to be mad about that horse getting loose, but it can't be helped. I better go in and tell him about it. By the time Victor reached the camp after some time of hard running... The Lone Ranger and Tonto were already up, getting ready to hunt for Dan. 
Sorry. Here, Victor. Him run plenty hard. Yes, but look, he isn't wearing his saddle. That's right. Hurry, Toto. We'll backtrack on Victor until we find Dan. Take Victor with us. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Uh, you lead Victor. Easy, big fella. Easy, easy fella. Come on, Silver. Get on, Scout. Come, Victor. At the farm hideout, Turk had decided to leave as soon as possible after hearing that Dan's horse had gotten away. The outlaws ate a hasty breakfast. Then, with Dan riding double with Mac, his hands still tied, the gang set out after bidding goodbye to Peg. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, backtracking on Victor's trail, reached the entrance into the farmhouse and stopped. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Victor. Oh. The trail leads to that small farmhouse, Tonto. Isn't that right? We leave the horses in that clump of trees over there. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scott. Come, Victor. Oh, Silver, easy oh, now. Scott, easy. Oh, Victor. Easy, easy, Scott. We go to the house on foot, Tonto. We can circle around and come up from the back. Have your gun ready. Ah. All right, come on. The woman, Peg, was busy in the kitchen of the farmhouse when the back door suddenly opened and she stared into the gun of a masked man. I don't move. Oh, a masked man? What do you want here? My friend and I made sure you were alone right now, but there were others here. Where's the boy? Boy? What boy? Stop stalling. I know he was here. Where is he? He... He went with the others. It's no use trying... Tell me who went with him and where they went, or I'll... Oh, Mom, you're hurting me. Answer me. Who took that boy away from here, and where did they go? It's Turk. Turk Banner and the others. Turk Banner, uh, so that's it. Where'd they take the boy? They go in my arm and I'll tell you. All right, there. Now speak up. You'd better tell the truth. Look, mister, I, I tried to help the boy. He's a nice kid. But I couldn't do anything except let his horse loose like he wanted. You did that? Yeah. All right, I'll remember that. Where are they taking him? Turk says he's going to throw him over the cliff from the trail along the top of Rocky Canyon. So as it'll look like an accident... The boy found out who he is. Hello. Ah. What matter, King Sabi? Tie this woman up and leave her here. You can leave Victor here, too. Ah. And then what me do? Get to town for the sheriff and a posse. Head out the trail toward Rocky Canyon. Turk Bannon, his men have Dan. They intend to kill him at the canyon. And what you do? I'll take a shortcut to meet them on the trail. I'll try to stall them off. Now, hurry, I'm leaving right now. Ah. Me get set up soon. Me tie up, woman. And got to get go. there in time. Some time later, Turk and his men rode along the trail that led to the rim of Rocky Canyon. Suddenly, Joe, one of the men, pointed ahead and spoke. Hey, Turk, look. A masked army coming down a trail. Riding easy like. A masked owl hoot by thunder. He sees us and he's still coming right along. Rain up, have your guns handy. Oh, 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 oh. oh. He's up there. Look at him, will you? Bracing as you please. You keep your mouth shut, kid, you hear? I won't say anything. Hi there. What happened, mister, before you get a bullet? Now, how come an outlaw like you don't go into hiding when you see a bunch of hombres riding toward you? Why should I? You see, I recognized you and your gang, Turk Banner. I have no reason to be scared off by you. I know the law isn't riding with you. <laughs> That's a hot one. Sure, Funny, I don't say <laughs> who you are if you can spot me like that from way up the trail. Maybe you have met me and just don't remember it. Anyway, I heard you were operating around here... Hoped I'd run into you and your gang sometime. Why? What do you want to meet up with us for? Maybe I want to join with you. Who can tell? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, who's a boy? I notice his hands are tied. Just a nosy kid who got too smart for his britches. I was just thinking. What, for instance? You really want to join up with us like you say. I might let you be the one to get rid of the boy just to prove you're as tough as you make out to be. Get rid of him? Now, you can toss him off the cliff into Rocky Canyon. I don't make a practice of murdering youngsters, Ben. Suppose I say I won't do what you want. And we'll do the tossing ourselves. After we put a bullet into you, mister. That's, That's right, right. right. Take take you. Well, I guess you leave me no choice. Right over here close and put him on my horse in front of me. And I can just sort of shove him off over the cliff as I ride along the trail up there. I won't even have to stop. 
But I can sling him farther than you at that, Turk. Hey, hombre. He's that mask hombre covered, man, while I put the boy on his horse. Come on. I'll uh, grab his arm and help. Come on, son. There he is. As Turk Banner leaned across to help Dan from his horse to the Lone Ranger's horse, the Lone Ranger suddenly grabbed the outlaw's arm with one hand while the other planted a gun in Turk's side. Now don't move or I'll shoot. <laughs> what the... I'll tell your men to throw down their guns before I put a bullet in you, Banner. He's got the drop on me, Ollie. You Put better it just... yourself. We're not putting down our guns. We can plug him and the kid, too. No, no, don't shoot. You'll kill me. Let him have it, man. Forget about Turk. Hey, Bossy, coming behind us. Take this, Banner. No. As Turk fell from his horse, the Lone Ranger grabbed a knife from his belt and swiftly cut the cords that bound Dan's wrist. I'll give that kid a bullet. No, you won't. No, I'm hit. Stop your guns off me. Dan, all right, Kimus, I mean. Yes, I am, Tonto. Oh, sure. This is a mass man you told me about, eh? We've got them all, Sheriff. Kirk Banner's out cold. That kid's to blame for all this. You recognize this belt buckle I hail? Well, if he is, he deserves a lot of credit for getting the Banner gang. He'll even get the reward, looks like. The reward can go to charity, Sheriff. Yeah. And that buckle will be evidence. And me tell Sheriff about woman at farm. She was nice to me and tried to help me. She didn't want them to kill me. I'm sure that will help her, Dan, when she comes to trial with the others. I'll see to that, mister. Good enough. We're right on ahead, Sheriff. We have to stop at that farm to pick up Dan's horse. See you later. Come on, Hillary. Come on, stop. Hey, who is that kid, anyway? How did he come to have a friend like that mask? Yeah, I don't rightly know who the kid is. But as to him having a masked man for a friend, that's something else again. He's a friend to anybody who's in trouble and worth helping. You and those other crooks ought to stop and think twice before you try to put something over on the Lone Ranger. The Lone, Lone Ranger? That's who he This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 